Hello, this is Dr. Iman Beg from Dubai. Today we have a very important discussion regarding orthopedics in dog, cats and birds. Whenever you have a patient of uh, uh, fracture or inflammation or uh, limping of the dog, cats, go for the x-ray. After taking the x-ray, you will be sure either the ligament, uh, tendon or the bone involved in uh, behind the cause of limping of the dog, cat and birds. So uh, first of all, we will discuss about what is fracture, anything uh, which can create the gap between the bone and um, any gap between the bone can cause fracture and uh, any foreign body between the bone. Sometimes what happens is the unicortical fracture in which the one cortex is involved like the green stick fracture, sometimes the bicortical fracture. So um, any gap between the bone can cause fracture and can be the fracture. There are the different definition of the fractures. There are the different types of the fractures depending upon the size of the fracture, depending upon the site of the fracture, uh, depending upon how many are um, ligaments and the tendon involved in that fractures. So every fracture need to be fixed with the different techniques. There are the different techniques of the fracture. Whenever you are going to fix the fracture, you must have to focus on the neurological exam, which is very important because when we fix the fracture, if the dog and cat having a nerve damage, then we don't need to fix the fracture. Maybe we have to amputate the legs because we know we cannot repair the nerve if there is a fully damaged. So we, will, we cannot do the uh, orthopedic surgeries in that case, go for the neurological exam and check for all the um, joints and the bones after palpation, you will be sure. Then you have, of course, you have an x-ray, you can just uh, check the x-ray on the illuminator, you will see that there is a very um, uh, remarkable the fracture differences. Okay, so after the fracture fix, uh, after uh, you are confirming like you have a fracture, there are the different type of the fractures. When you are confirmed, you have fractures, ligament damage or like from sometime is the anterior cruciate ligament uh, rupture, which is quite common in the larger breed dogs. We have to do the surgery TPL though. So we will, uh, we are not discussing right now. We will discuss this later. Okay, so, uh, Regarding the orthopedics, there are the three different type of the fracture fixation, like the three things which we have to obtain after the fixation. The first is the reduction of the fracture. The second is the stability of the fracture. The third is the uh, fixation of the fracture. Fixation or the fixators are very uh, important for fixation of different type of the fractures in dogs and cats. There are the uh, different type of the fixators which we can use for the fracture fixation in dogs and cats. So the first is a very important fixators um, which is quite 80 to 90% of the uh, practitioner are using this type of the fix fixation techniques. These are the internal fixation technique. Internal fixation technique is very important to repair any type of the fractures like if you have uh, any type of the fracture in uh, larger breed dogs, smaller breed cats or sometimes you, you have to fix the fracture in the birds, you just go for the internal fixation. 70 to 80 percent uh, practitioner are using the internal fixation for the fracture. So in the orthopedics, there are the different types of the fixation technique through which we can fix or repair the fracture. The first and very important is the internal fixation. In the internal fixation, there are the list of the techniques which we can use with the different fixators. The first and the most important in the internal fixation is the bone plating. Bone plating in which we use LCP or the DCP, uh, dynamic compression plate or low compression plates. Uh, in the DCP, in the bone plating, we have to incorporate the six cortices in one side and six cortices in other side at least it means three screws on one side of the fracture and three screws on other side of the fracture like other fragment of the fracture must be involved for the bone plating this is the basic principle for uh, bone plating in dogs and cats we can fix the fracture, all the fracture we can fix with the internal fixation with the uh, bone plating and uh, sometime uh, there will be a uh, plate fracture occurs if you place the plate on a wrong side. Like if we are talking about the humerus, there is a, we have to uh, apply the or uh, apply the plate or fix the plate on the 
tension site like in the humerus there is a tension site on the lateral femur on the lateral uh, radius cranio medial or the tibia on the medial side these are the sides in which we can uh, apply the plate and we can fix the fracture through the bone plating so there is a very important to uh, fix the fracture uh, to idealize or to evaluate where is the tension side of the bone through because we have to apply the plate on the tension side uh, yeah there is a, uh, one more thing which i have to discuss right now is we have to fix all the forces which are causing the fracture because whenever you are dealing with the fracture you have to uh, compensate all the forces which are exerting on the fracture side and sometimes what happens is the fracture is overriding forces torsional forces bending forces uh, tension forces like there are the different type of the forces which are acting on the fracture so we have to fix all the fracture forces so the internal um, internal fixation the first is a bone plating the second is the interlocking nail interlocking nail is the uh, another technique which we can use for the repair of the communicated fracture communicated closed fracture there are the two type of the fractures communicated communicated open fractures communicated closed fractures we will discuss the open fractures later the communicated uh, closed fracture we can fix with the uh, interlocking nail in the interlocking nail we have a device i will share a picture with you we have a device we will uh, pass the rod inside the medullary canal after passing the uh, it must be a normal grade there are the two types of the placing rods into the bone one is the normal grade another is the retrograde normal grade through which we are just uh, passing the rod from the proximal extremity of the bone to the distal extremity if we are uh, passing the pin or the IM pin, intramedullary pinning or the rod from the fracture side toward the proximal and then we have to fix the fracture then distally, this is the retrograde. So in the interlocking nail, we go through the normal grade and fix the fracture. After stabilizing the fracture, we just uh, pass the nails. After fixing the fracture, we will be having very good um, healing or the callus formation after 20 to 25 days. But we, um, we will remove after um, six months or seven months like internal fixation we usually uh, remove later um, after a prolonged time in for the external fixation we use uh, we remove after um, two to three months maximum so uh, there is a interlocking nail another technique is the intramedullary pinning and the circlage wiring which is very 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 important because uh, I see many practitioners they are just uh, doing the pinning because in the pinnings you have a very basic instruments so in uh, with this basic instruments you can just fix the fracture with the pinning I discussed uh, before that there is normal grade or and retrograde through which we can fix the fracture with the pinning and there is the two techniques for the wiring of the pinning uh, wiring of the bone the first is the full circlage wire another is the hemi circlage wire full circlage wire uh, uh, in that type of fractures like the spiral fractures or the long oblique fractures we can fix this fractures with the full circlage wire uh, for the uh, hemi circlage wire we go for the short oblique fracture the long oblique fracture if the fracture diameter is twice more than the diameter of the bone the fracture would be the long oblique fracture spiral fracture you can see the like just, uh, just like a, a fracture in the distal extremity of the humerus there is a groove um, through which groove uh, you have most of the time you have twisted or the spiral fractures the spiral fractures or the long oblique fractures we can fix this fracture with the im pinning along with the uh, full circlage wire for the short oblique fractures we can fix the fracture with the im pin and the uh, hemi circlage wire but the short oblique fracture uh, recommended technique for to repair this type of the fracture with the bone plating sometime we have what gonna happen is the transverse fracture which is just between the transverse and the uh, short oblique fracture we can fix all the fracture with the plates okay so the next technique is the tension band wiring tension band wiring is a very important technique there are the uh, different techniques 
uh, there are the different scientists they are giving the naming of the techniques depending upon the uh, site of the fracture or the function of the um, fixators are used in that technique like there is a tension band wiring the very uh, important uh, example of the tension band wiring on the abelian fracture in the tibial tuberosity uh, when the interior ligament of the uh, patellar ligament which is just um, inserted in the tibial tuberosity so tibial tuberosity uh, it's just tear from the tibial tuberosity along with the chip of the bone so you can just fix the fracture with the two pins on the um, tibia through the transverse and fix this fracture with the tension band wiring there is a eight shape uh, tension band wiring uh, like this uh, and other than that uh, there are the um, internal fixation which we can use is the lag screw like for the uh, salter harris type three and four fractures we can just with the um, fix the fracture with the lag screw from the uh, one condyle to another condyle and sometimes we fix the fracture with the epiphysis with the diaphysis there is the lag screw sometime um, another technique which we can use is the cross pinning for the supracondylar fractures these are the all fixation techniques which are including in the internal fixation the other technique which is uh, relatively less used in the veterinary practice is the external fixation in the external fixation there are the different types of the internal external fixation the uh, external fixation we can also call the esf esf type 1a esf type 1b esf type 2a esf type 2b esf type 3 there are the three the different types of the external skeletal fixation through which we can fix the fracture in the esf um, we mostly use the open communicated fractures because we have to manage the um, um, in fracture side through the external antiseptic solutions or manage the wound because uh, maybe the chances of infectivity or the infection at the respective side so we have to fix these fractures with the external fixation external fixation usually um, did i did it uh, in the catch and the birds so the uh, it is less uh, important or um, the less used technique in which we use the rods uh, from the one cortices to the another cortices sometimes we use the bar on one side sometimes we use the bar on the second side sometimes we use the bar on both side of the bone fracture bone to fix the fracture sometimes we have a ring uh, fixators there are the different type of the fixators which i uh, discussed like there are the type 1 type o. it's depend upon the uniplanar or bicortical biplanar unicortical something like that the last technique is the combination of the different techniques uh, like the hybrid hybrid fixation in the hybrid fixation this is very important fixation technique in birds like I did for the fracture fixation of the radial fracture fixation and the most common fracture in the birds is the tibio tarsus fracture I did many surgeries regarding tibio tarsus fracture in the birds through the uh, this is called the hybrid fixation or the tie in method through this we can just fix the fracture uh, this is very important so in this case we just pass the pin through the fracture side uh, like uh, which we discussed before this is the retrograde bone uh, pinning uh, through we can fix the fracture through the pinning uh, through the retrograde and um, after fixation the fracture um, after fixation the fracture we just twist the like this is a fracture we just twist the pin uh, outside and along with that side and then we we will just pass another im pin from the one cortices to another another cortices and there will be a joint like this is the one pin and this will be another uh, pin there is a joint so we can fix this joint with the uh, i used um, i i would like to use the um, epoxy which is very good to uh, f uh, to fix or to tie the stainless steel material so we have to fix um, i will share the picture with you like this so this is the way so we can fix the fracture with um, combination of the bow technique internal fixation because the pain in inside the bone and the external fixation if your fixators are visible outside you can generally say that you have a patient with the re repaired of the external fixation if your fixators are not visible outside 
then your fracture uh, technique fracture repair technique is the internal fixation but this is not the rule in the hybrid fixation we see the fracture fixators outside but uh, along with that side we have a fracture pin inside also so this is very important so we cannot uh, make this rule like you can see the fixator outside that is external fixator you cannot see the that is internal fixators so we are uh, summarizing all the lecture now uh, the first technique which we discussed is the internal fixation the two uh, types are very common in the internal fixation is the bone plating and the im pinning im pinning is a very very common in the internal fixation which through which we can uh, repair many fractures I am pinning and the cross pinning. Uh, Sometimes we have a supracondylar and the condylar fracture. We fix this fracture with the cross pinning. I am pinning, cross pinning, and bone plating. In the external fixation, we usually do the external fixation type 2A and type 2B fractures. And for the uh, hybrid fixation, which is we commonly use in the birds, is the type 2. Uh, type 2 hybrid fixation which we can use in the birds this is a very uh, this is a short introduction regarding the ortho basic of the orthopedics in dog cats and birds um, whenever you are you are treating your patient you just have to stabilize your patient um, you just have to re rehydrate your patient whenever you have a fracture fracture through the any accident or something like that um, any uh, injury so just uh, resuscitate the patient first after stabilize the patient through the fluid therapy sometimes you are fixing the fracture and your uh, your patient having a um, um, spleen damage and you have a hemo abdominal hemo abdomen sometimes what happen is a very huge bleeding in the abdomen and your patient will be expired during the surgery go for all the procedures all for the test after confirming like your patient is um, stable for the surgery then you can do the surgery surgery is a very important for the patient health um, you have to do the orthopedic surgery as early as possible after stabilizing the patient um, and the last thing which is very important you have to uh, give good intention and a good focus on the post operative care because uh, to fix the fracture is a very important whenever you are um, tra treating with the animals they can move to the different places so we have to control their uh, movement we have to uh, control uh, their um, uh, excitement and we have to give the good diet along because we need to um, uh, fix the fracture and um, stabilize it we have stabilized the fracture and we have fixed the fracture so we need um, a good diet to uh, to make more callus at that side so we have to stabilize like uh, if we are talking about the callus formation if we have a bone uh, with the rigid stability the callus will be the shorter if like if we are treating our patient with the external computations like the pop bandage they we have a bigger callus formation if we have very little like these are the, the both fra fragments of the fracture if we have a very rigid stability then there will be a very little callus formation so these are the some basic regarding the orthopedics hope so uh, you will um, get some information uh, through it so thank you so much